Hello everybody, this is Kyle Jenkins from the Maryville Library. Welcome to another session of The Truth Is Out There. This week we're talking about social isolation. As is the case with all of these, if you have further questions about the topic discussed, or if you're looking for research help, you can stop by the Maryville University Library front desk, give us a call, or use the 24-7 chat service on the Maryville University Library home webpage. Let's dive right into social isolation. Before we get too far, I want to make sure we have a clear definition of what social isolation is. As is always the case, if you're ever looking for good, verifiable information about a wide range of topics, using the search bar on our library homepage, you can usually get a research starter that's sometimes provided by Salem Press Encyclopedia, as it is in this case. Now, instead of social isolation just meaning general loneliness or feelings of loneliness, social isolation, in this case, refers to as is quoted below, the absence of social interactions, contacts, and relationships with family and friends, with neighbors on an individual level, and with society at large on a broader level. So when we talk about social isolation in this week's session, it's more than just those feelings of loneliness. This is getting into systemic, almost clinical feelings of isolation and discussing isolation within a broader social context. If you don't want to go through that reading, totally fine. Provided a TED Talk here below by Michael Nolan, who's a paramedic who both experiences social isolation in his job and in the people that he works with. So to make sure we have a clear understanding of social isolation, you can look at the research starter that's above. You can take a look at the TED Talk that's been linked below. One other thing that's important to understand with social isolation is kind of where the term itself comes from. So I provided a section along the left-hand side to discuss a particular case study with social isolation when it comes to the study of socialization, and then specifically with men. So I want to make sure we situate social isolation in its proper academic discipline. In this case, the study of social isolation comes from sociology. In sociology, you study the interactions between human beings and the systems that kind of govern those interactions. Within the study of socialization, or excuse me, sociology, you have the study of socialization. And that is the process by which humans actually learn those rules that govern the social interactions that take place. Sometimes they can be done explicitly, where someone will explain to you directly what the rules are. And sometimes you pick them up implicitly throughout your experiences, in your waking life, or through your interactions with other people. So in other words, social isolation comes from that study of humans interacting with one another. Whereas social isolation might be someone's innate inability to seek out connections, or it might be an inability to seek out connections due to circumstance. But it's important to place it in that kind of academic context. If you want to learn more about socialization and how people learn rules, either explicitly or implicitly, I provided an example below that discusses what's called the urinal game. This is an example about discussing how men in public men's restrooms learn the rules that govern those interactions. Now, it sounds kind of strange, but if you'd like to read about it, you can click on the photo on the left. Or if you'd like to play it, you can click on the photo on the right. I apologize for the formatting here after doing this on an iPad. But if you'd like to learn more about socialization in general and its connection with sociology, I provided links to four sociologists and philosophers below that de describe a little bit more about the origins of socialization and how the study has evolved over time. In the upper left-hand corner, you've got Abraham Maslow. In the upper right, you've got George Herbert Mead. In the bottom left, you've got Sigmund Freud. And in the bottom right, you've got Jean Piaget. If you click on any one of these sociologists or philosophers, you can be taken to a research starter or an ebook that will give you more information about sociology, socialization, and where their theories kind of fit into it. Or if you don't want to hear from people in the 1900s, you want to hear a little bit more modern example of socialization and social isolation, the NPR podcast Hidden Brain recently had an episode where they discussed the unique problem of social isolation within communities of men. So whether you want to hear about it from a modern context, if you want to hear about it from philosophers, or whether you want to try the socialization rule game example that's at the top of this page, 
you can see how social isolation as a term fits into this broader academic discussion about human interactions. With that in mind, I want to turn over to some library resources that we have related to social isolation. One thing that's clear, and that I want to make clear, especially after talking about those sociologists, is that there is no one theory that perfectly describes the uh, origins or cause of social isolation, and there is no one cause or factor that directly relates to social isolation. There are many number of different types of causes that are all unique to particular individuals. And these resources highlighted here are designed to reflect that. The ebooks you see at the top come at the term social isolation from a number of different perspectives related to prison, social isolation among elderly populations, among poverty, related to bullying, social media, living on the fringes of society. So social isolation comes from a number of different contexts. Even looking through our library databases, you can see that as well. You could search for social isolation in our ERIC database focused on education. You could search for it in Gender Watch that's focused on gender topics, or in psych articles that's focused on psychological topics. No matter where you want to begin your search with social isolation, you can take a look at it from a number of different unique viewpoints. Or if you prefer, just start with a few articles and see where the research takes you. I've provided links to a few of them down below, which again, come from those unique and varied viewpoints. Some of them related to financial health, some of them related to how anthropomorphic products actually help end feelings of social isolation. So there's a number of ways you can begin your topic and research related to social isolation. It depends on what you're interested in and what you'd like to pursue further. One context I'd like to highlight in particular though, especially considering our you know, digital move, it's going to be the topic of filter bubbles. Now, as discussed in this TED Talk below, a filter bubble relates to social isolation within kind of a digital context, but not necessarily in the way that's been discussed previously. As quoted from our research starter provided by the Salem Press Encyclopedia, filter bubble refers to the narrowing or limiting of a person's intellectual perspective based on web content provided by personalized search technology. So what this means is, Filter bubbles and social isolation are connected in the sense that in your online life, you may not be receiving all of the information you expect, or you might not be connected to all of the people that you think you are. I think this is important to highlight because as shown through the graph provided by our database Statista, in a context where millions of people and huge percentages of persons within the United States are connected via social media, that does not necessarily mean that social isolation is not a topic of discussion or that it's not a problem. As shown by some of the quick facts below, in the sense that you've got 61% of millennials that are using Facebook as their primary source of news, social media companies like Facebook have admitted that the posts that people are seeing on their products are not complete. They're influenced by who you're connected to, what things you search for, and what kind of keywords you use. So the restriction that takes place in your digital filter bubble can have an effect on your life and on your understanding of the world. Importantly though, as will be discussed later as well, this is not permanent. You can actually work to you know, quote unquote pop your filter bubble. Either by watching the video below challenging the algorithm to learn a little bit more about what it means to pop your filter bubble, by using some of the resources found below, you can learn a little bit more about truly what information you're finding and gaining access to online. You can work to increase and broaden that scope from some of the things that you're finding. You can actually learn a little bit more about social isolation through a variety of TED Talks that you see here. One at the top, I think is a good start in terms of figuring out the profound and real health effects that can take place from social isolation. But as was discussed previously, you can learn more about it from contexts such as solitary confinement, and the incarceration process in the United States. You can learn about it from the context of play and how play might help end feelings of social isolation and loneliness. 
you can have scholars come and talk about the potential causes for social isolation in the world today. The videos are meant to highlight that social isolation is not something that's just been discussed from the era of people like Abraham Maslow and Sigmund Freud. It is an ongoing discussion. It's an ongoing concern. And it's something that we need to draw more of our attention to. So with that in mind, I'd like to end today with a discussion of some additional resources. If you want to learn more about social isolation beyond the library resources, or if you or someone you know is experiencing feelings of social isolation, there are a few resources here that can provide some helpful access you might not have known previously. At the top, you've got the phone number and link to the website for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. We've got links provided here for the Maryville Counseling Center. If you need to speak with somebody on campus, or a connection to the student organization webpage where you can connect with fellow saints. There's a link to the weekly podcast, The Lonely Hour, hosted by Julia Bainbridge, that has people come on to talk about social isolation and, in some cases, some of the joys that they find in the time spent alone to kind of destigmatize discussions around social isolation. You can connect with the ASPCA if you're interested in adopting a pet. Or provided by the Sandy Hook Promise Group, you can actually find a few ways that you can help to end social isolation in your community. So working on that broader contextual level. No matter your interest in social isolation, there are resources here on this page that can help you in further investigate the topic and expand your base of knowledge. Remember, if you have further questions about what's found in this Truth Is Out There discussion, or if you want to get some more help and research, you can either speak with us at the University Library front desk, give us a call, or use the 24-7 chat service. Thanks again, everybody. Just remember the truth is out there, and we'll help you find it.